Hello my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. Welcome to Ed Lead Scallon's workshop. This is like video four from my video behind me, the one before that and the one before that. It's kind of been an ongoing little project that I threw myself into. And I just want to show you guys a little bit. And I got everything dismantled. Tripping over my antenna over here that I pulled apart. Remember that one a couple of videos, five or six videos ago? So I got that pipe here, probably about, I'm going to say 20 feet tall. And I'm digging my hole pretty deep. So I'm going to put the pipe down. And I am going to blow your guys' minds on something um i'm making a bigger version of this because this was so successful and i want to take that and apply it to something bigger by modifying it just a little this here is going to be basically a self-charging system with endless power that's all i'm going to say in the ground i want to take you guys over inside here and i just want to make a short demonstration and i'm going to leave you with that i want comments i want comments so here is ed leah scallon's replica wheel okay and notice that when you line this up, this side is lined up, okay? So there's like a magnetic connection that goes around. And when it comes around and back around the neutral, it spreads out, okay? And it does the same thing on this side. And it lines up and it does the same. So it's creating two halves of this wheel as having equal force. And it's varying back and forth okay this is the system demonstration i want to show you guys is mechanical this is a mechanical demonstration now the reason i'm doing this is because the system outside involves this kind of demonstration to you guys and what i am actually doing is giving you guys a sort of insight on why and how my thinking changed, okay? So here you go. So in a copper wire, you have um, electric running through it, okay? And it's being forced on one end and it has a buildup and it's being pushed through the wire. Now, normally it's gonna run like a CD disc like this and basically it's almost like a spot sticker and it shows a rotation around the outside okay now visualize this now as you have this normal flow of energy that's running around that copper wire what you have when you concentrate like a soccer stadium and with all the amount of people that's in there and you only give them one way out. When you give them that one way out and they have to leave, it's going to be a big concentration here and they all can't get out. So you're going to have a push. Now when you're pushing through that copper wire back to that disc, when you get that push going, the disc flattens out. So what happens here when the disc is flat now, it actually has a not only this way motion, but you're giving it a twist motion. So the way you're designing the flow through the copper wire is you're taking this disc, you're, you're flopping it over, and it's going to have force going this way, but also it's going to do a centrifugal, a, a centrifugal type of uh, corkscrew going through. Back to this now. 
So when you know you have that type of uh, posture inside the wire, you have to uh, be able to understand what's creating it first. And then you must question how do I create that force in other ways? Instead of putting regular raw power to it, like um, conventional wall power, AC 120, 240, or you're putting in 12 volts, 6 volts DC. Now, what I want to show you guys is when you, when I grab this, now I am going to pull it. But the demonstration here I'm going to show you guys is how important that the curvature, and when I talk curvature, when it comes to energy, where the north, south, east, and west positions are, because when it comes to coils, direction is essential. And when I go to pull this back, I can't pull it back because of the direction of where it's at. So if you want energy to come through a wire naturally, the way the planet works, you're going to have to be in the right position. Um, Eslia Scallon mentions this. Tesla mentions it. Marconi mentions it. This right now, I'm pulling, and it, I cannot get it to work because I have this in the wrong angle. Now, if I just tilt it a little bit, now if I pull back, I still have an issue. So what I have to do is I actually have to take my hand and go in this fashion to kind of pull. I'm putting a sideways pull, and then I'm pulling back. Now I got it in motion. Now I got it in motion. So now that it's in motion, a couple things I want you to observe. Thing is, I'm pushing out, pulling back, pushing out, pulling back, pushing out, pulling back. I had to give it a sideways thrust. Now, if this was in this angle, I would just have to give it a light pull and then equal push. Light pull, equal push, light pull, equal push. So that kind of resembles what AC current does in a wire. Because what it's actually doing, it's providing a forward motion and a backward motion. Forward motion, backward motion. And I am able to accomplish this wheel turn it in a 360 degree by doing so. So when it comes to running power through the wire, you can see the principles that I'm using to show you guys on your own studies that the push and pull is very important. The angle of where you put your coils and your wire is very important. And the fact that outside what I am putting together is going to have that initial left hand or right hand kind of force I had to add to my hand. I'm going to be providing a 12 volt battery and the battery will be suspended off of this pipe here and it's going to be what starts the motion guys based on my demonstration my mechanical demonstration it's going to start the motion now I'm already putting together the pieces that it's going to take to one recharge the battery and two, use the ground as my positive energy and use the ground on a separate piece to be 
my negative energy. The ground is filled with positive and negative. And if you just build two different cavities, you're going to have two different avenues coming out of here. So you guys, I just want to bring this to your attention. What I'm actually working on right now. Um, I am in full steam as of after this video. I've been doing a lot of research this morning. And I'm going to show you guys something out there that um, is very important to this system which would be called uh, a choking coil and uh, we're going to show you guys how to pull amperage at a high voltage and we're going to run a bunch of different motors and we're going to put together some of the things I want to run is this chop saw and this drill press uh, I want to run full steam out of this system here and um, just start looking through it the first thing we're going to do is to really tune it in um, I built a uh, frequency meter by taking apart some meter gauges from old uh, electronic stuff and I'm making my own circuit board that's going to read frequencies um, you know, I guess there's ones you could buy out there, but uh, I'm going to build my own and we're going to use that and dial that in to tune in the system. We're going to um, use those tall Tesla towers. Notice I have those apart. And what we're going to do is some special things with that. I want to show you guys, and especially in tuning that I haven't seen out there. There's only one video I seen and uh, pretty much would be a Don Smith. Um, not so much the system is a Don Smith system, but uh, this is a, a, a system that uses these coils in those manner. The, the coils that he uses there and how they're positioned and stuff really, really matters. And he don't really tell you the full... Uh, the full picture of what he's really doing over there but uh watch so many videos as i have i put the pieces together in some of them you know most of them you can throw 98 percent of the video away in your mind and keep a quarter and it's that quarter piece that you were looking for for your endeavor or whatever you're doing so um all right man i gave you guys 12 minutes 57 seconds roger out